Today's video is made possible by Brilliant.org. Today we're going to look at a really interesting and powerful result known as Ramanujan's Master Theorem. And this result is discussed in a lot of different places, but we're going to mostly mimic the discussion that's inside the book, Inside Interesting Integrals. So that's a really nice book if you'd like to check it out. So let's start with our main building blocks. So we're first going to have a sequence of numbers, but that sequence of numbers will be indexed over the integers. So to put this into symbols, we have this list a sub n as n run th runs through all integers. So notice this is a doubly infinite sequence. So maybe right in the middle would be a0, and then it goes up with positive indices, a1, a2, a3, so on and so forth. And then it'll go back with negative indices, a minus 1, a minus 2, and so on and so forth in the reverse direction. So that's one of our building blocks. So our next building block will be a function which pushes us through this sequence. And so that function will call sigma, lowercase sigma, but you could really call it anything you want. So we'll have sigma, which takes a sub n and gives us a sub n plus 1. So notice that means that, let's see, sigma inverse will take a sub n and give us a sub n minus 1. So this is most definitely an invertible function just by its definition. And then another thing that we might want to notice is that for all integers n, and this is not just positive integers n, but also negative integers n, we have sigma applied n times to a0 is equal to a sub n, whereby sigma to the negative 5, for instance, we really mean sigma inverse applied 5 times. Okay, so let's see. We've got our sequence here. And then we've got this nice function which is pushing us through our sequence. And then we're going to have one more object that's going to put all of this together. And that will be a function. And so the function will be defined as follows. So it'll be the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n over n factorial times a sub n. And then we've got x to the n. So it's a power series where the coefficients are defined by the sequence. Well, we're, they're really defined by the non-negative entries from the sequence, but they're scaled a little bit. They're scaled by this minus one to the n over n factorial. Now, since we've got an n factorial, that means that this power series will converge for most choices of a sub n. We won't be like super careful about exactly where it converges though. Um, but with our example in the end, we'll see that everything works out. Another thing that I'd like to point out is sometimes we would start with a function, we would expand that function as a power series, then we'd use that power series expansion to extract this sequence a sub n, at least for the non-negative indices, and then we could also extend it backwards, as long as that extension backwards kind of makes sense. Okay, so like I said, now we've got our three parts and we're ready to get going. So I'm not going to state Ramanujan's Master Theorem. We're just going to build it from scratch. In other words, we're going to derive it. Okay, so let's look at the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the t minus 1 times f of x dx. So maybe first notice if f of x is the exponential function, then this is exactly the gamma function. So in some ways, this is some sort of generalization of the gamma function where we've got this like more arbitrary function built in here, f of x. Okay, so what are some other things we'd like to notice? Well, maybe that this t isn't said to be a positive or negative integer or even an integer at all. We'll actually, actually talk about that as we move forward. Okay, so now let's replace f of x with its power series definition. So that's going to give us the integral from 0 up to infinity. We'll have x 
to the t minus one, and then the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of minus one to the n over n factorial, we have a sub n x to the n, and then dx, because recall that's all within the integral. Today's video is made possible by brilliant.org. Not only do they provide the best learning platform on the internet, I know, I've checked, but their wealth of resources also brought you the pinpoint about Ramanujan's master theorem notes and the pin fact about the gamma function in this very video. How convenient. You can find those brilliant.org wiki type pages on those topics by using the link in the description. However, Brilliant is much more than that. With Brilliant, you learn by doing. Create programs with drag and drop coding, interact with charts and graphs, and play around with so many stunning visualizations. These features really help you grasp the finer points of a subject. My son and I are going through the pre-algebra course and I love seeing him light up when things click for him. And thanks to Brilliant, I get a lot of those moments. I highly encourage you to start your own learning journey today and treat yourself to a unique experience that lets you learn by engaging interactively with the topic. Go to brilliant.org slash Michael Penn to get a 30-day free trial and the first 200 people will get 20% off their annual subscription. Thanks once again to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. So next up what we'll do is use our function sigma that we've defined over here to start the simplification process. And in particular, we'll use this fact here that a sub n is simply n applications of sigma to a sub zero. Okay. So that'll allow us to rewrite this as the integral from zero up to infinity. And then we'll have x to the t minus one. And now we have the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of minus one to the n, sigma to the n, x to the n over n factorial. And now that is applied to a sub zero, but I'm gonna in fact put the a sub zero outside of the integral. I'm gonna put it outside of the integral to the right though. Recall that a sub zero is a constant so I can take it out of the integral. I'm gonna put it to the right, however, because this operator sigma to the n is operating on a sub zero. So that means we can really think about this whole object right here, which I'm putting in parentheses. So that's the integral of this sum as some sort of operator or function, which is operating on our sequence like we had defined over here. Okay. So next up, let's notice that we've got a bunch of stuff to the nth power right here. So we might as well put all of that together. So in fact, this will be equal to minus sigma x all to the n power. Or maybe the better way to write it would be minus x sigma all to the nth power. Just keeping in mind that maybe the sigma should really be to the right. It should maybe even be to the right over here, although I won't fix that because that's the thing that's attacking a zero. It doesn't do anything to x. Okay, so now let's rewrite that real quick. So we still have the integral from zero to infinity, x to the t minus one. And now we'll have our sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of minus x sigma to the n over n factorial dx. And then just as before, this whole operator is acting on a naught. Great. But now we look at this and hopefully we recall some standard series from like a calculus two class. And look at what we've got here. We've got the sum of something to the nth power over n factorial. So that tells us it should look somewhat like an exponential. And that's exactly what we have. We have e to the minus x sigma. So let's rewrite this. So this ends up giving us the integral from zero to infinity of x to the t minus one. And then we'll have e to the minus x sigma um, operating on a zero dx. So I'll bring that a zero in now into the integral just because we can at this point. But now what's happening is this e to the minus s x sigma is operating on a naught. And if you look carefully at what we have, actually these are like right on top of each other, you'll see that this e to the minus x sigma operating on a naught gives us 
exactly this expression right here. So in some ways that's building our power series expression for F. And this is actually not exactly, but it's related to something called the formal Taylor theorem for what it's worth. And at this stage, we'll perform a change of variables. So, and this would be a standard change of variables to perform in this setting where we take the stuff in the exponent and we set that equal to a new variable. So let's set u equal to x times sigma. Notice that means x is equal to u times the operator sigma inverse, because sigma has an inverse. And that also means that dx is equal to u is equal to du times sigma inverse, kind of for the same reason. And now we're almost ready to start populating our new integral. I will take this term and re quickly write what that will turn into, just like for thoroughness. So if x is equal to u sigma inverse, then this will be u to the t minus one and then sigma to the one minus t. So now let's start putting this all together. So what do we have out front? We'll have a sigma to the one minus t times a sigma inverse. That's from x to the t minus one and dx. Putting that together, we'll have a sigma to the minus t. Okay, so there's our sigma to the minus t. We can take this a naught out front. So we really have sigma to the minus t operating on a naught. And now we have the integral from zero up to infinity of u to the t minus one times e to the minus u du. But let's note that that's exactly the gamma function. That's gamma evaluated at t. So we could rewrite this as a sub minus t because that's exactly how this would work, right? Sigma applied minus t times to a naught would move us down to minus t, and then we'll have gamma of t, which recall if t is a natural number, that simply gives us some sort of factorial. And now let's point out that if t is an integer, then in fact, this will be exactly one of the members of our sequence, which is down the line. That being said, if t is not an integer, then in fact what we've done is we've generalized this sequence kind of naturally to non-integer values. So either way you look at it, this is like pretty useful. So let's look at a simple example of this in play. So just so that we have it on the board, this is our result of Ramanujan's master theorem, where f of x is expanded like we had before. Okay, so now let's look at a quick and fairly simple application here. And that will be to look at f of x equals 1 over x plus 1 to the fifth power. So the first thing we need to do is expand this as a power series and then absorb or pull certain things out of the natural coefficients until it's in this form right here. So let's do that. So this will be equal to the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity. And then we have our binomial coefficient, which in this case is minus five choose n, and then we'll have x to the n. So we need to recall how negative binomial coefficients work, but that shouldn't be too terrible. Okay, so this is gonna end up giving us the sum as n goes from zero to infinity, and then we have a descending product starting at negative five, and it has n terms. So that means we'll have negative five times negative six, all the way down to negative five minus n plus one, and then over n factorial. And then that's our coefficient of x to the n. So like I said, we've got a descending product of n terms that's starting with negative five. But now let's notice that we can rewrite this and we can rewrite this quite nicely so that it's got something that looks like this immediately. So like I said, we've got this descending product of n terms, but all of those n terms are negative, motivating us to pull a minus one out of all of them. So let's do that. So that leaves us with the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity, we have minus one to the n over n factorial, and then we'll end up with five times six times seven, all the way up to, let's see, It'll be n 
plus five minus one. In other words, n plus four. And then that's multiplied into x to the n. Okay. So notice we've got our minus one to the n over n factorial already in place. And next up, what we'd like to do is get a little better format for this, which I have in green parentheses. So what might we have? Notice this is almost n plus four factorial. The only thing that we're lacking is four times three times two times one. So in my mind, that means we could write this as n plus four factorial over four factorial. And that's actually exactly what we have here. That's a pretty good description. Okay, so what does that tell us? That tells us that for our function f of x, we have a sub n is equal to n plus four factorial over four factorial. Okay, so that's good. But now that we've got this closed form for our sequence, we can start applying Ramanujan's master theorem. So let's see what we have. We'll have the integral from zero to infinity of x squared over one plus x to the fifth is equal to a sub minus three and then gamma of three. So why is it a sub minus three? That's because this number two right here can be expressed as three minus one. So the t that we have is being played by three. Okay, so let's see, a sub minus three, that's pretty easy to calculate. That is one factorial over four factorial, and gamma of three is two factorial. So in the end, that gives us two factorial over four factorial, which is one over 12. So if you enjoyed the video, I've got other videos on the channel where we look at results of Ramanujan. There should be one on the screen right now, and that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.